Greetings comic lovers and welcome back to Casually Comics, the channel where we chat all things comics, from reviews of comics new and old, to history, to anecdotes, to really wherever our whims take us. Still in whim land, but on a focused track. We have a map with destinations circled. We're still carrying on with Harley Quinn, Black, White, and Red, a DC anthology series being released digitally, featuring different takes on Harley Quinn by various authors and artists, all being released for 99 cents. Each chapter has had a very different tone so far, and I'm here for it. Different strokes for different folks, and oh boy. Get ready for chapter four and rap battles. Some of you just sat up a little straighter and some of you are cringing. Come on, roll with it, loosen up. Before we get started, I'm Sasha and if you're enjoying this content, you know what to do. Hit that like button, hit that subscribe button. Join us on this crazy comic book journey. I made a promise to myself not to do too many of the rap battle lines. For all of you, I'm thinking about you. Not me, I don't, I can't make myself cringe, I'm a mom. The cover for this one is a lot of a lot. Not in that there's a massive amount happening, but in that Harley is yelling and everything is very loud despite its muted color scheme. Mute in terms of the amount of colors used, not that there's not color on it. Because it's a lot of pink, because the pink is being used in lieu of black lines. So Harley is yelling, eyes popping, aggressive sound lines, a microphone. It has you forming an opinion before you even open it. For me at least, it made me a little wary. But of course, depending upon your love of 80s aerobic style music videos, it might have made you very excited. She's about to get physical. This story is Who Dis, and this with two S's. It's not the late 2010s Who Dis, like New Phone, Who Dis, or Whose Man's Is this. Said this, not this. Failing. Slang fail. It's more of a classic diss involving insulting people like, oh, sick burn. No, don't run away. Come back. Slang means you get a chance to be cool. This one is written by Tim Seeley with art by Juan Ferreria. We open on Harley strutting her stuff down the street, listening to music, singing away. That is until she is accosted by youths. Also, they all look the same. I was like, are they clones? And then I realized, oh, they're all trying to emulate the Joker's look. Look, in comics, it could be clones. That is a very real possibility. It also gave me Toy Story flashbacks. Useless Toy Story trivia fact. In Toy Story 1 in the birthday scene, all the kids are mauled after Andy. Go look it up. They all have his face. Give it to us. It's not for your ears. Release the Joker tape. Hey, they want to look like clones? They all got the same voice. Wait a sec, do you say Joker? My super crappy ex-boyfriend, Joker? Oh, you picked the wrong girl to go fanboy on. So this comic has a lot of pink in it, like a lot. Harley Quinn, black, white, and pink, and also red. I get why, the penciling is a lot more sketch-like, but I don't know, I kept being distracted by how pink it was. Totally subjective, but my preference is for it to be a bit more sparing and more red. While I was rambling on, Harley beat her attackers and she's gone back home to Ivy and is trying to understand what happened. What tape are they talking about? Ivy is down with the underground music scene, and so she knows that there is an infamous Joker tape circulating. And in fact, there is an underground rap battle that is being advertised on Instagram under the account of Goth I Am. He also runs a club called Cape Shakers where they host rap battles. So secret, no one will ever Never find out. Batman never checks Instagram. Like he can't hack a private account. I think Bruce is like 10 Finstas. A Finsta is a fake Insta. He's offering the Joker tape as a prize for a freestyle battle, but you know what really matters? Look who's commenting on the post. Dick Grayson and Damien. I'll be there, dancing the night away. You are the squarest of squares. I will show you how to get properly crunk. Not if I tell your dad. Stop it. This universe is starting to come together for me. Harley decides that she needs to do this. She needs to go compete and she needs to win that tape. Cause of course she does. And so to the rap battle. Featuring Bougie Bane, Two Dented, Cash Huntress, Young Croc, Lil Rill. Lil Rill, yes. <laughs> I don't know why that appeals to me so much, but it does. And Scarface. Harley bursts in and demands to be included under her rap name, Preparation H. Look at Ivy's face. Fighting through that level of secondhand embarrassment? True love. And so it's on. Preparation H versus Lil Rill. Get ready to cringe. Your clothes say you got no Vader. No one said I'm your father, Luke. You're all sad and spooky. Stand there like a stripper Baba Duke. Boo! Disqualified. Cause it's Baba Duck. Remember, if it's in a word or in a look, you cannot escape the Baba Duck. Scariest prop I've seen in the movie in a while. Harley struggles at first, but turns out to be a natural because of her psychiatry degree that allows her to have superpowers and pinpoint people's weaknesses. You know, like all psychiatrists. <laughs> or at least the ones in media a lot of the time. I know all of your issues, Deanna Troy style. We also get this terrifying panel, which will haunt me for life. Now who else wants to get rhymed by Dr. Quinzel? No thank you. 
I'm scared. And so Harley dominates, except for with Scarface, who only loses because he has a pop chorus that gets him booed off stage. And so here it is, Goth I Am versus Preparation H. I'm the illest, the flyest, the creature of the night. My signal in the sky means you already lost the fight. I hope you appreciate how restrained I'm being with all the rap battle lines, there were so many. I'm sparing you from the fact that my flow is about as fresh as vanilla ice. If there was a problem, yo, I solve it. Check out the hook while my DJ revolves it. The cringe levels finally hit peak tolerance for Ivy and she starts to leave only to be stopped by the Joker. He's here to get his recording back and he's also wearing a great vest. But Ivy decides to grab the tape from Goth I Am's office because she's seen some green up there so she figures there's a plant. And look, he has a picture posing with Batman. I knew it. I knew he went to and enjoyed all these underground events, cleaning up Gotham my foot. More like hanging with all the cool Gotham nightlife. Also his mixtape is called The Joke Killin'. I see you. <laughs> you don't have the eternal verbal gifts I do, Harls. And you'll never get to hear them because a genius like me completely over your head. I really like how haggard he looks in these panels. Like he hasn't slept in days. Stubble everywhere, but his clothes are still on point. I don't know, something about it speaks to me. The Joker would probably look like a hot mess more than he would like to, or think that he does. But his tape starts playing, courtesy of Ivy, and womp womp, he's terrible. <laughs> okay, um, <laughs> my name is Joker and I'm here to say I like causing chaos in a major way. The hell is this? I don't know, Harley. I've been asking that since we started. Joker sucks. He ain't even vanilla ice. He's vanilla water. No. 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 I'll never not read a dramatic no. Harley decides that she doesn't need the tape after all. And she and Ivy head home with Harley deciding that, you know what? She's gonna stick to K-pop. K-pop! I still don't understand her outfit choice for our underground rap battle, but that's okay. You know what? It doesn't matter. It's done. This one, oh, it embraces the Elseworlds alternate universe fanfic feel. It goes in hard and it doesn't look back. So it's another you gotta take it on its own terms kind of story. Canon? What's that? Never heard of it. So you have to accept it on that level. And some people aren't gonna be able to do that. Also, some people are just super reticent when it comes to rap battles and the like. Too many flashbacks to when mainstream shows added a terrible rap battle to an episode to stay hip and relevant, and then it became a joke to do it badly and ironically to show that you knew that it wasn't actually hip, and that made it so much worse. For me, I don't know. I went someplace and I ended up really enjoying this one. I didn't think I was going to, but then it just went in so deep on its own internal logic with tiny details like the Bat Fam comments and the Batman photo, Lil Rill ended up having a really good time. So really, I won the rap battle. Also, this chapter and chapter two started to fuse in my head to form this kind of super headcanon. This version of Harley that's just flitting from underground hobby to underground hobby based on what she sees on social media. Somebody made a comment on chapter two asking if maybe the Riddler would have a YouTube channel and I fell down that hole and then somebody else was asking questions about the other things that different villains would be doing on social media and now I live there. I'm trapped in a Gotham social media headcanon alternate universe and I don't want to leave. You know his channel would be called Riddle Me This and it would be full of commentary conspiracy videos about Batman, how he's secretly the mayor and maybe a lizard person. Oh God, I'd have notifications on. I can see how this issue would be completely off-putting for some though. Like this is far left field and pretty silly. Plus the art varies sometimes from section to section. For the most part, it was pretty solid, but then you get terrifying nightmare fuel panels. The characterizations of people who aren't Harley or the Joker actually are pretty far from their main mythos counterparts as well. But I can tell you this, this. I'm not gonna forget this one. <laughs> was this one for you or was it too much? Let me know all of your thoughts down below. While you're down there, please do all the YouTube things. Like, share, comment, subscribe, and hit the bell notification so that you never miss a vid. Thanks so much for taking some time out of your day to spend it discussing comics with me. I always appreciate it. I'll see you again soon. Bye-bye.